Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're talking about Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. This is section 10.2 on rays. Rays. Let O A be a located vector located at the origin such that A is not A is not equal to the origin. So O A is a located vector like we talked about in the last section. Okay. A is definitely not the origin. Right? That'll be important. We're going to take some point P and we define a ray with vertex P in the direction of OA to be the set of all points P plus TA. So the ray in a vertex P and in the direction of OA of OA located vector okay, is the set of all points such that P is equal to P plus, I'm sorry, P plus T A, where T is just greater than or equal to zero. So T starts at zero, it goes all the way up to infinity. All of these points is the ray that has a vertex at P and is in the direction of O A. Same direction as the located vector O A. At this point, we'll just call it the vector. Okay. The you can also f have another ray, the ray with vertex P O in the direction of OA. That's just going to be the origin, which is 0, plus TA, where T is greater than or equal to 0. And you should be able to see that these two are translations of each other. So if we were to draw it out this way, this is point A here. And so the ray that extends out this way, this is ray, let's call this ray number 2. This is ray number 1. Ray number 2 is over here, but if the point P were over here, We'd go out in the same direction, par do parallel to that. That's not parallel. And that'd be the direction of the first ray. And you can see that this is just a translation of the other. There's For every point in here, there's a point over there that's just a translation through P. right? So the, the one ray is the same as two ray translated. Translated through P. OK? All right. Let's do some examples. So we're going to have P is equal to minus 1 comma 3. And we're going to have A be the point 2 comma 1. Okay. Now if we let T equals 5, then we would have on this ray, we start at 1, 3. Then we would add 5 A's, 2 comma 1. And that would give us See, 5 times 10 minus 1 is 9. 5 times 1 plus 3 is 8. Okay. So that is the point on the ray at t equals 5. Okay. If we said t is equal to 1 third, we'd start at 1 3. We'd add 1 third of 2 comma 1. And we would get, let's see, 2 thirds minus 1, so minus 1 third. And then 3 plus 1 third, so we just write 3 and a third. That's what we would get. All right, that point also lies on the ray. And you can go through all the points t equals 0 all the way up to whatever you want to go to, infinity. Infinity is not a real number, obviously, but you can continue on to infinity. You get all the points on that ray. OK, now suppose that we had two points. So we had points p and q. And we want the ray starting at p that goes through Q. What, what should we do there? Well, we recall that A is going to be Q minus P, right? Using the line segment notation. And so we can write this out as the, all the points P plus T times Q minus P. Um, obviously, you can rewrite that as uh, uh, let's see, 1 minus t times p plus q. That would all work. All right, so example, so if we had p is equal to minus 1 comma 3, same as before, and we had q is equal to 2 comma 5, then q minus p would be equal to 3 comma 2, right? Because we take 2 minus 1, minus minus 1 is plus 1, and then 5 minus 3 is 2, okay? 
and then we'd write down all the points would be minus one comma three plus t times three comma two. Okay, pretty straightforward. All right. Now here's a remark in here. He says let a be a point not equal to the origin. Okay. So this remark. So let a be a point that's not the origin, right? Let c be a positive number. C is greater than zero, so it can't be equal to zero. Then the ray having a given vertex p in the direction of a is the same as the ray having the same vertex p in the direction of c a. Okay, so then the ray having a given vertex p in the direction of a, so the ray vertex p in the direction of a is the same as the ray with the vertex p in the direction of ca. And this sounds kind of weird because you would think that <clears throat> you would think that you, if you had so this point A over here, and here's this point P. And so P is in the direction of A. So this is the direction of A. So P would extend here. So you would think that if you multiplied A by some other number, you'd get some other point. But the numbers that you multiply A by, you'd end up on that direction. So if you did like a, a fraction, it'd be like 1 half A is here, and then 2 A is over here. It's all on that same line, OK? So this makes a lot of sense once you think about it graphically, but if you look at it this way, it doesn't make sense. In fact, mathematically, the second ray, this first ray, this is P uh, plus TA. This one is P plus, let's use another number, another letter S times C times A. And as you can see, as long as this number is greater than or equal to zero, well, S is going to be greater than or equal to zero. C is greater than zero, so this is going to be the same ray. Okay. Now notice that if we took a negative number, so if we had negative a, that would be a completely different direction, and the ray would be going in the opposite direction. Okay. Because of this remark, we're able to make a geometric intuition, right? Uh, make a definition. So let a not equal to the origin, and b not equal to the origin, right? We say that OA and OB have the same direction. OA, directed vector, has the same direction as OB, directed vector, if there exists a number C such that B is equal to c times a, and c is greater than zero, right? So if we can find a point that is a multiple of a with a positive number, then these oa and ob have the same direction. Their direction is not different, just the, the size of them are different, OK? Now, let's let pq ray. No, is that directed vector or is that ray? I don't know. This is directed vector. And mn, these are directed vectors. Be located vectors. We say that they have the same direction, okay? They have the same direction if there is c greater than 0 such that q minus p is equal to c times n minus m. What are we doing here? Well, what we've done is we've translated these to the origin, right? So the directed vector PQ, we've moved it to the origin. It'll have the same direction as O to Q minus P, right? And this is the same thing. It'll have the same direction as O to N minus M. These guys have the same direction, right? And so we can say QP is equal to C times N minus M if they, if they have the same direction and c is greater than 0. Okay, That's what we've done there. Uh, we can draw a picture of all these vectors if you want. Let's say our p is here, our q is here, our 
M is here and our N is N is here. Pretend that's a parallelogram. Okay. So PQ is the same as O to PQ, O to P minus Q, right? And MN, directed vector, we won't locate that there. Let's say this is this point right here is N minus M, right? And if we can multiply one of like PQ by NM by some number that's positive to get PQ, then we know that they're in the same direction. That's what we're doing there. Pretty simple stuff. Okay. Let's do an example for this one. So an example. So we have the two points A is equal to 3, 5, and B is equal to 9, 15. Okay. Um, are these the same direction? Well, we can multiply 3 by 3 to get 9 and 5 by 3 to get 15. So A and B are in the same direction. OA and OB are in the same direction because B is equal to 3 times A and 3 is greater than 0. Okay. Okay. Another example. Let's do another page for this. I'm not using different colors. I should use different colors to make it more exciting and interesting. We have the located vectors PQ and MN, if I can write properly, MN vector, have the same direction if, have same direction, if P is equal to 1, 3, Q is equal to minus 4, 2, M is equal to 7 comma 1 and n is equal to minus 3 comma minus 1. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like. So q minus p, that'd be minus 4 minus 1, so that's minus 5, and then 2 minus 3, that would be minus 5. Okay, no, 2 minus 3 would be minus 1, minus 1, not minus 5. And then n minus m. We start at n, we subtract m, so that's minus 3, minus 7, that's minus 10. Minus 1, minus 1, that's minus 2. Okay. The question is, is there some number that we can multiply n, m by, n minus m by to get q minus p? And the answer is yes, there is 2. We can show that q minus p is equal to 2 times n minus m. 1 half, I'm sorry. 1 half times 10 is minus 5, 1 half times 2 is minus 1. And so therefore, these are in the same direction. Another way to write this is n minus m is equal to 2 times q minus p. You could just reverse them. You don't have to keep them in any particular order because these two are the same. Similar, what, what's the equivalent equations, I guess, is the non, non, right word for that. Let's do another example. Okay. I think there's two more examples. This is the one before the end. So we're going to let p is equal to minus 3 comma 5 and q is equal to 1 comma 2 and we're going to say m is equal to 4 comma 1 okay we're going to find n such that mn is the same direction as pq pq vector okay so we need to satisfy n minus m is equal to q minus p and we're just gonna we're just gonna uh, say c is equal to one right we get to choose c we're gonna choose c equals one so n is equal to q minus p plus m which is equal to q minus p so one minus minus three is four plus four is eight two minus five is minus three plus one that's minus two okay 8 comma minus 2 is the answer, and you could check that out and see if it all works out, okay? And in the last example, this he's talking about physics now. I love it when mathematicians talk about physics. It's so cute. Okay. In physics, located vectors are very useful to represent a physical force. For instance, suppose that a particle is at a point P, so a particle at point P, and there a force is acting on a particle with a certain magnitude and a direction. So we have a, vectors have a magnitude and direction. That's 
the physicists from day one of your first class are going to say vectors have a magnitude and a direction. We represent this vector by a located vector and the magnitude by the length of this located vector. Thus, we draw a picture. So we have P over here, and we have Q over here. And we say the force acting on P is PQ. We can interpret it as a force acting at a particle. Suppose, similarly, suppose that an airplane is located at O in figure 10.7. So we have an airplane located at point O, and as we know in physics, all airplanes are particles. Okay? There's no difference between airplanes and people and skyscrapers and chicken's eggs. They're just all particles. Um, of course, in the most before you get into rotational kinematics and stuff like that. Suppose an airplane is located at point O. We can interpret OA as the force of the wind acting on the plane. Okay. So OA is up here. This is the force of the wind on the plane. Okay. And this is strange because the wind is pushing it from behind. Oh, well. And we can represent uh, if the pilot runs his engines with a certain force, he gives a direction to the airplane by placing his rudders a certain way. We can also represent this force direction located OB. I don't know what he's talking about here, but this is pretty crazy. This is the force of pilot's will. So he's manipulating the controls somehow. So the total force acting on this would be um, OA plus OB, which if we add it together, we get a point over here, which is um, A plus B, right? So that's the total force. That's what he's trying to say. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> this is kind of a poor example because actually airplanes, when you look at an airplane, every pilot knows this, you have the thrust, you have the drag, you have the lift, and you have the weight, right? And as, as this, these four forces will tell you the resulting force. In this case, the thrust is higher than the drag, so we have a net forward force, and it looks like the lift is slightly higher than the weight, and so you're gonna be going faster and up, right? That's how pilots think of it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series, uh, this section, and we'll continue next time. There's lots of exercises here. I don't want to go over them. I, I think they're kind of fun. They're somewhat easy. If you have any questions about them, please ask. Don't forget to do the three-dimensional case. It's not that terribly difficult. And with that, take care and bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here, and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.